Well, President John Mahama began his meetings in Brussels on Tuesday with a call for Africa's integration process to begin with a strengthening of structures in the various countries. Speaking at a high-level meeting to discuss an AFDB-commissioned report on the fragility of some states, President Mahama shared efforts to bridge the poverty gap here in Ghana. According to officials on the trip with President Mahama, the AFDB report says, rather than classify specific nations as fragile states, fragility should be classified as a natural risk within the development process which has led to rapid transformation on the African continent. In his speech, President Mahama indicated militarization and faithlessness in states by its citizens are results of inequality and that must be addressed urgently. He said... The wide gap between the rich and the poor in society as economies accelerate requires a proper social safety net of protection for the vulnerable. He shared Ghana's establishment of District Assembly's common fund into which between 5 and 8 percent of gross national revenue are transferred directly to the district assemblies and how that has worked for Ghana. He added the dispensation of the fund is at the discretion of the district. President Mahama said addressing inequality through decentralization and fiscal empowerment must be taken into account if Africa is to strengthen its nations. He also spoke about supporting democratic institutions and youth unemployment as areas that need urgent attention. He concluded by reiterating a will to push firmly the integration of Africa's economies in which, he says, the comparative growth for African countries lie. The president is in Brussels, Belgium, for bilateral meetings. Uh, so we have to turn attention to uh, the issues of finance. And the finance minister, Seth Tekpe, has reiterated a number of measures being implemented by government to improve the economy, assuring it may take more than a year for the benefits to be felt. Briefing Parliament on the state of the economy, he however noted that despite the marginal gains made so far, the threats of volatility still exist, and therefore the need for government not to relent. Delivering an urgent statement on the floor of Parliament about the current state of the country's economy, Finance Minister Said Tekpe first explained why the economy is experiencing the current challenges. The economy came under severe stress, particularly on the fiscal front, on account of exceptional factors that include implementation challenges associated with the single spine with policy, significant shortfall in grants from our development partners, non-realization of projected revenue from oil companies due mainly to shortfall in projected output in 2011 and 2012, larger than expected petroleum and utility subsidies, and a continued disruption in gas supply to the country from the West Africa gas pipeline that led to a substantial increase in subsidies and reduction in output. He stated, government's national fiscal stabilization levy, together with a special import levy on some imported goods, are expected to yield an estimated 630 million Ghana cities by the end of the year, contributing 0.2% of GDP. Mr. Speaker, in addition to the revenue measures, expenditure rationalization measures were also introduced for purposes of achieving the fiscal target for the year. This include regular adjustment of fuel and utility prices to achieve better targeting and thereby reduce related subsidies to the barest minimum and processing of all GOG expenditures on the gift list and classifying them under a revised chart of accounts for all government transactions. Setekwe later re-echoed some interventions in the 2014 budget that should strengthen government's revenue and expenditure regimes. The following revenue measures are being implemented. Increase of the VAT rate by 2.5 percentage points and a broadening of the base to cover fee-based financial services and real estate. And an increase in withholding tax on management and technical services also from 15 to 20 percent. An increase in corporate income 
tax rate of free zones companies selling on the local market from 8 to 25 percent. The Ghana Investment Promotion Center, GIPC Act, according to the finance minister, will be reviewed to ensure that exemptions granted by GIPC are consistent with government's exemption policy. Government, he added, is meanwhile migrating all its transactions to a new chart of accounts to facilitate greater transparency. And we continue to stay in Parliament. Some members of Parliament have expressed mixed reaction to the statement de delivered by the Finance Minister. There was a banter in the House between Information Minister Mahama Ayariga and MP for Old Tafo, Dr. Akutose, over comments made by the latter on the state of the country's economy. We have consensus now on a number of key issues that we should be dealing with as a country. We have consensus on the debt issues. We have consensus on the challenges of our wage bill. We have consensus on the issues of revenue mobilization. We have consensus on the challenges of our deficits. And we have consensus on the need for us to look at the way forward in terms of developing the infrastructure of this country. I say that we have a consensus. On Saturday, this speaker like just on Saturday, he said he did not have a consensus with the minister. He said it on Saturday. So I'm glad that he's changed his mind between Saturday and uh, we are going forward. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on Saturday, Mr. Speaker, on Saturday, I was on a radio platform with him and we're discussing a lecture by Dr. Baumia. And I said to him that there is nothing that Dr. Baumia has said that this finance minister has not already said. And there is no, there is no recommendation that Dr. Baumia has made that this finance minister is not already implementing and implementing more. Mr. Speaker, and then he went further. She concluded, he went further to say, I want to state on this platform, the minister is giving me a hard time. That's what he said. That's the part I'm referring to. So now that you've changed your mind, it's okay, we are going forward. Mr. Speaker, I will have wished the finance minister will replace the word challenge to crisis because and my colleagues have said... Honourable member, don't provoke debate. Don't provoke Mr. debate. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I would have wished he had used crisis instead of challenges because this particular activity that Honorable is happening this morning majority leader. is unprecedented. Yeah, has Mr. Never Speaker, happened. Honourable Majority Leader, Leader, you have the floor. Yeah. I also want to at least add that the single sign a uh, single spine wage policy was also meant to motivate workers to produce because productivity in the country is very low and i want to call on my colleagues in leadership of labor to not only focus on talking about conditions of service but also putting in place motivational incentives from their own perspective to Honor increase Productivity. The sole commission of judgment debt, Justice Yawapo, has called for the separation of the Attorney General's Department from the Ministry of Justice. The commission has attributed some huge compensation paid to claimants to the failure of the AG's department to defend the state. Failure of state attorneys to appear in court to defend the state has been blamed for many of the judgment debt cases the commission has had. In many of the cases, the commission heard the state attorney's failure to appear in court has led to the award of default judgment against the state, which also tends to accumulate interest because the state fails to pay over a long period. Justice Yawa Pao lamented the poor attitude of state attorneys. Yeah, I think it's very, very important because if the attorney general is also a minister of justice and is always, you know, you know, very much involved in political issues, cabinet meetings, and leave the, the, the legal matters to the chief state attorney state. They do their own thing. We should have an attorney general who will be very serious with matters involving, you know, uh, uh, suits against the state. Because that's where all the monies are going to the drain. They don't have time to supervise the, the, the state attorneys who handle the cases in court. They take is there the solicitor general, the DPPs, when they distribute the cases, the lawyers don't go to court. That's all. Then default judgment. For several years back, 
cases involving government and the attorney general will not bother at all. Then when judgment is taken and then the, the, the properties of the state, Bank of Ghana, are garnished, then you see them running, health as care. His comments came on the back of a 254,643 Ghana CDs paid one Peter Aban during the construction of the Kanda Highway in 1993. I think it's high time the state took a second look at the caliber of lawyers that are recruited to the Attorney General's office. It's serious. It's always default judgment, default judgment. The state matters, we don't defend them. But if it is an individual matter, we rush to court. For years, it will be dragging on. But state or within MEMS closed, the money paid, then people share. Counsel for the Commission, Dometi Kofi Soko, also stressed Ghana will not lose huge sums to judgment debts if state attorneys were committed to challenging such claims. All that we have throughout these are sittings is that most of the time, they do not go to court to uh, project the the, 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 the feelings or interest of the states. If, if they had gone to defend, I mean, these judgments wouldn't be given at all. In fact, if they are going to defend, there was the possibility that the other party would have lost because uh, in the records that we have before us, most of them are cases, involve cases that could easily be defended and won. Yes, but because you are not there, and the judge will certainly, uh, well, do what law, the law requires him to do for the party that is serious about his or her case that he has put before the court. The Attorney General's Department, Lands Commission and Urban Roads will later appear to assist the Commission in its investigations into that particular issue of Kanda Highway Compensations. Matilda Pomaga for Joy News, Accra. Well, onto one issue that's on the hearts of many people, the Electricity Company of Ghana as indicated, the ongoing load shedding program would continue despite marginal improvements in power generation in the country. Public relations manager of the ECG, William Boating, says electricity consumers will continue to follow the load shedding timetable for some two weeks, after which the situation will be reviewed. Mr. Boating urged consumers to report to the ECG's call center if their power goes up for more than 12 hours. After weeks of erratic supply, the power provider uh, two weeks ago released a power rationing timetable, which would have consumers experience 12 hours of blackout during peak hours after every 40, 48 hours. This is the result of the non-availability of gas supply from Nigeria and breakdown of some power producing plants. And other news, transport fares will also go up following or have gone up uh, following an increase in the prices of some petroleum products. And petrol is now selling at two Ghana cities, 73 pesos from two Ghana cities, 55 pesos on the litre. And the prices of diesel, LPG, kerosene and premix fuel have all gone up in line with the National Petroleum Authority's review of petroleum prices every two weeks. Already, the Greater Accra uh, chairman of the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, Robert Saba, has told the news team that there will be an increment in prices following a meeting expected to be held on Thursday. Oh, the passengers can expect an increment this time around. Passengers will not escape from increments in order of fare. Mm -hmm. This is not our making. If uh, Ghanaians could recall, uh, last, uh, you know, uh, February, uh, January, when we increased the, the, the dollar fare by 20, uh, that was uh, on the 27th of uh, January. Mm. First February, there was an increment of uh, 3%. We kept our members at bay. We prevented them from, you know, in the increment. Mm. On the 1st of March, there was another increment of 6.25%. And uh, we, we exhibited the character of not increasing the lot of fare. Well, the Ministry of Health is promising to improve or has promised to improve the situation in uh, the country's prisons with regards to health and uh, so better can cater for the health needs of inmates. Uh, this was after a visit to the Insawan prisons uh, where inmates were screened. 
tree. It has over 3,700 inmates, half of whom are remand prisoners. Despite the huge number of inmates, only about a third of the prisoners are registered under the National Health Insurance Scheme. The overcrowding situation, according to prison officials, poses a great health risk to inmates and health care delivery. The medical director at the Insawam Government Hospital, Dr. Kofi Abloh, expressed concern that health cases from the prisons to the hospitals are usually brought very late and sometimes at an advanced stage, making treatment very difficult. We see close to about 500 inmates in a year. Most cases that we see are respiratory, um, cataracts, um, we've seen a couple of glaucoma. Uh, so these are the conditions that we normally see at the hospital. So if you are able to um, um, get this report, you can work on them as early as possible and then you avoid the complications thereof. Officials say the lack of logistics and facilities at the prison's infirmary have made healthcare delivery very challenging. The theater at the infirmary, for instance, has been abandoned for years now. Several of the infirmary theater equipment has also been left to waste, and there is currently no resident doctor and ambulance to help deal with emergencies. The population has stand this morning, 3,700. We don't have a single ambulance to take care of the inmates' needs, inadequate health staff. I will be most grateful if you second some to us. If you don't have doctors, be the qualified nurses to support our infirmary. Again, inadequate supply of essential drugs and regions for the laboratory. And we are happy that today you are here to provide drugs for our EMEs. Sector Minister Sharia Ite, who was taking around the facility, promised to give it a facelift. We have looked at the um, theater and uh, we think that uh, we can rehabilitate the theater into at least an appreciable you know, status to allow doctors to carry out at least minor operations here. Uh, the assignments of a resident doctor will be taken care of immediately. And um, I think in addition to uh, a medical doctor, uh, will also bring some nurses because we have women here and perhaps a midwife, you know, that will also take care of uh, the women's uh, gynecological problems. Inmates during the health screening could not hide their frustration as some screamed for remission. <laughs> The National Mobile Clinic exercise is set for five days to screen inmates at the Insawan prisons, followed by other prisons across the country. Well, let's do some charity. And a 16-month-old baby of Sunyai in Kwaben in the Bonafu region, who is suffering from hydrocephalus, needs immediate medical attention to survive. Blessing Pukua developed the condition three months after birth. Her parents need help to raise 3,000 Ghana cities for surgery at the Kung Fu Anoche Teaching Hospital. According to Esther Usua, the mother of little blessing, Pokuya, the condition was detected in the third month when she reported to the Sunyani Regional Hospital. The baby was then referred to the Kung Fu Anoche Teaching Hospital, where the first surgical operation was performed at a cost of 1,500 Ghana cities. A second surgical operation was supposed to be conducted in February this year, but the parents do not have the required money. Frustrated mother Esther also appeals for support from the general public to save her daughter's life. <laughs> Because of Trinity, I'm a Timbia Moshesa. Momoji at all hospital Christ can be caught to the last time on Moji at all. The dry almost a young couple, and Timothy Stoller, who she and other students is so near you. Even your baby cram wedding. Well, many school children in the Upper East region are often forced by their own parents to migrate down south during holidays to do menial jobs to support the family, a practice which has been condemned as a violation 
of their rights. To help the children understand these rights, Africans Ghana, which is a non-governmental organization, is sponsoring the formation of child rights clubs in some schools in Bogatanga. Here's our Upper East Regional Correspondent, Albert Sori. Children from the Talensi and Namdam districts, Bolgatanga Municipal, and the Kasana Nankana districts participated in the Africa's Child Rights Festival. The program was organized to help the children learn about their rights through cultural performances, as well as debate, quiz, and spelling bee competitions. The children were awarded exercise books, pens, novels, and given other educational materials for their various schools for participating in the festival. The Africa's Child Rights Festival will now be held annually. David Paula is the director of programs at Africa's Ghana. For high rates of child abuse, for instance, child labor is very high within the region. Force and uh, child marriage is, is also quite high. We are also aware that in this same region, we still have issues of child, children migrating down south, seeking greener pastures. In an attempt to deal with all this situation, that we believe that it is important for us to uh, mobilize the children who are in school, encourage them to continue to be in school, and encouraging them to learn alongside or knowing what their rights are so that they can uh, protect their rights and also know even where to go to in an event that the right of the child is trampled upon. Some of the participants spoke about the benefits of the festival. I have gained so many things in this one because when I was in school and this program was not organized, I was not having the confidence and even the leadership skills, I was not having them. But for the sake of this program, in fact, I can go to public which people are more than this and I'll still be able to perform well. This program has helped, has helped me because I'm a, a final year student. If I'm to write and I think if I meet this type of topic in Waii, I'm not going to panic. I'll write it and come out with excitement. This program has helped me a lot. By the time, this is my year I'm going to complete. But I don't even know something concerning debate. By this program, it has helped me a lot. But now, if you're questioning, ask in debate. I don't think I'll, I will choose a different thing apart from better writing. Albert Sorry's report from Bogatanga. The Bonafu Regional Security Council has issued a two-week ultimatum to members of the old Dokuchina community near the Bui Hydro Dam. Well, they will have to be relocated or risk forceful eviction. And according to the RECSEC chairman at a news conference in the regional capital, Shinyang, the council will deem it imperative to use the necessary force at its disposal to ensure that the dam and the generation station are preserved in the national interest. A report brought through by Nesta Kafuya Joma. Join News first reported about the presence of the illegal miners at Old Dokuchina in the Banda district some months ago. The Bonafu Regional Security Council subsequently sent a fact-finding team to the area on February 25 this year. Based on the report of the fact-finding team, Rexec, in consultation with the National Security Council, decided to drive the people out of the area. According to the regional minister, inhabitants of six villages in the catchment area of the dam were relocated by the Bui Power Authority in 2011 to pave way for the construction of the dam, but six households at Dokochina failed to relocate. Paul Evanseidu further stated that illegal mining and other illicit activities have taken center stage in some areas of the Bui National Park, including the fringes of the dam, which is believed to contain deposits of gold-bearing rocks. He mentioned illegal fishing, illegal and indiscriminate logging, as well as trading narcotics as a direct effect of the refusal by the people of Old Dokochina, led by one Edward Kujokuma, to be resettled. The regional minister consequently stressed that the unacceptable situation calls for immediate and decisive action by RECSEC in order to safeguard the priceless national asset from being destroyed by self-seekers. Contrary to the Sinyani High Court ruling, the self-imposed teeth and the occupants of the state's houses have continued to reside at the Kutina. 
Furthermore, the unwillingness of the six households to relocate has led to foreign nationals from neighboring countries, including the Cote d'Ivoire, Niger, Burkina Faso, leaving China, invading the area with impunity. Reports indicate that the, lo the locals and the foreigners are engaged in all manners of illegal activities, such as illegal mining, illegal labouring, illegal fishing, narcotic drugs, prostitution, illegal trading in various currencies, and trading in general goods, among others, which pose a great threat to the preservation of the Wee Dam and the Wee National Park. Meanwhile, Joy News has learned that illegal mining is gradually spreading to other parts of the Bui National Park, which also needs immediate attention and protection. Nesta Kafuya Jomes report for Joy News. Well, so that's it for the news updates we have on the show. Before we go, though, a recap of our top stories. Well, there's been some marginal improvements in power generation in the country, but the electricity company of, of Ghana says the load shedding exercise will continue. No, transport fares is expected uh, or are expected to go up following a meeting that will be convened by the Greater Accra chapter of the GPRTU on Thursday. Mm. And the finance minister has reiterated measures to address current economic challenges, he says, would take more than a year to bear foot. But of course, the opposition says the measures are not new. Mm, what are your own comments on the current issues we'll be looking at on the show this morning? Please get interactive. We have um, the network page on Facebook, join us on TV, and also we also have a handle on Twitter, um, the AM Show today. And uh, please just try to get interactive on uh, all those platforms and try to relay those messages to us. We again would have to relay them back to you. Mm, well, our show is for brought to you by Mixi Coffee. Uh, we'll come back with Spot Shortly. It's brought to you by Cowbell. Bell. Please stay on. We'll be right back.